What's going on, beautiful people? It is I, your flying locomotive, and faster than a speeding bullet supercliff, coming at you live with a brand new video. And for today's majestic and fantastic video, we are continuing 2023 with the Fist of Conchu with Moon Knight issue number 19. But before we dive into the world of Moon Knight and punching bad guys in the face, if you are new to the channel, then smash that like and subscribe button. That way you guys never miss out on anything that happens on this majestic channel. So what are you waiting for? Let's raise the bar and go full on Super Saiyan. Hit that subscribe button. Thus, without further ado, let's fix some faces with Jed McKay's Moon Knight issue number 19. Our story begins inside the Murberton prison where all your dreams can come true. And it's here where things start off with a therapy session between Dr. Plesko and the one and only Zodiac. Now, Zodiac starts to go on a tangent about how people will generally say that America gave birth to two forms of art, jazz and comic books. And yet countries like Japan have made these two mediums better. However, there's one thing that America has everyone beat, and that's supervillains. Now, full disclosure, the comic goes back and forth between Moon Knight and Zodiac. And so just for simplicity's sake, we're going to go over Moon Knight's section first. Then we'll check back out with Zodiac. The more you know. Now it's here where we pick up with Moon Knight and Hunter's Moon. And from what we're seeing, these two are heading into the underground. Because check it, you see one of the Moloids, the little dudes who live in Subterrana, you know, you've probably seen them fight alongside the Mole Man. Well, it turns out that one of these Moloids went to the Midnight Mission for Moon Knight's help. And given that this area of Subterria is underneath the Midnight Mission, surface level or not, it falls under the mission's jurisdiction. Now, while the duo are traveling deeper and deeper to their intended destination, Mark's asking questions about being a fist. He's asking Badir about the rules. You know, for example, Badir and Mark on multiple occasions have come back to life because of our roles as the fists. But if that's the case, why have there been so many fists in the past? And thus, Badir explains that every time we're resurrected by Khonshu, every time that happens, we lose a piece of our mind. And so essentially, you're to serve as a fist until you've been resurrected so many times to the point where your mind is so fractured and missing, you basically end up being a feral. And thus, this is where we see the difference between Mark and Badir. For Mark, he views this as a punishment, whereas Badir, he sees it as an honor. Now eventually, the duo arrive at their location. For you see an old school villain named Commodore Donnie Planet. Holy crap, Jet McKay. That's one hell of a callback. Him and his men have subjugated a group of Moloids to labor. Seemingly, they're searching for something and they want the Moloids to chisel their way to finding it. And because Moon Knight is a superhero, he and Hunter's Moon do what they do best. They start a riot, for they start to kick the crap out of Commodore Planet's men. Punches are thrown, kicks are thrusted, and heck, even the Moloids start to join in on the fun as well. And thus in time, the heroes are able to defeat Commodore Donnie Planet. That's one hell of a stupid name. <laughs> However, it's in this moment where Hunter's Moon starts to get real with Moon Knight because it's here where he tells him that after he was resurrected by Khonshu, Khonshu gave Badir a message to give to Mark. For apparently Khonshu's powers are waned due to his imprisonment. Therefore, because of this, the next time either Mark or Badir dies, Khonshu won't be able to resurrect them. Switching back to Zodiac, we see that he's still continuing with his love speech for American supervillains. And by the way, it turns out that he's a major fan of Cletus Cassidy. So yeah, that's pretty messed up. But uh, <laughs> it's like being a part of the Buffalo Bill fan club. No one wants to be a part of that. However, it's here where Zodiac starts to ask Dr. Plesko questions. And it turns out a Moon Knight and Dr. Plesko are on the same side. Prior to Zodiac waging war against our hero, he did some research. And apparently back in the day, Mark and Dr. Plesko worked together as mercenaries. For the two of them both committed war crimes. Now, eventually, as the conversation continues to spiral from American supervillains to the life of Dr. Plasco and how war and past deeds can anchor down a being's guilt, this is where the doctor bids Zodiac farewell. Now, Zodiac is acting as if he's won against Moon Knight. Because remember, issues back, he's the one who shot Soldier. But that's when Plasco gives the villain the real scoop. Rather, he didn't win. Instead, Soldier was able to be brought back to life. So yeah, you actually didn't win anything. You lost. And now you're stuck in here forever. But before Plusko leaves, Zodiac screams out loud that those who are affiliated with Moon Knight eventually end up dead, for it's only inevitable. And thus we switch scenes inside a dark room, where two dudes dressed up as if they're part of Squid Game are shown loading up their weapons. Basically, we can have the assumption that these two are assassins, 
And with pictures of Moon Knight and his friends shown on the table, I think it's safe to assume that these dudes are planned to kill those closest to Moon Knight. And that, folks, was the end of Moon Knight. Issue number 19. And thank you guys for checking out my video, as it truly, truly means the world to me. Jen McKay continues this awesome run of Moon Knight by making Zodiac as the reader's inside lens into what's happening. I'm really liking the comparison between Moon Knight and Zodiac. Obviously because for different reasons, but the fact that they both see therapists, and whether they want to or not, I like how both are addressing their issues. Both characters are aware of their flaws. Zodiac is obviously crazy, you know, he's sadistic and there's no redemption story for him in the future. But I think what the comic does so well is by saying, yeah, Zodiac is insane, but much like the Joker, he's also in charge. He's aware of his actions, and he knows what he's doing. So I definitely appreciate that. I'm curious to understand more as to why, you know, the resurrection of Hunter's Moon, what the reason is for why neither Mark nor Badir, like, what does Conchu being stuck in the prison realm have to contribute to that? And so it makes you wonder what Conchu actually has in store for his fists. And last but not least, who the heck are those assassins in the end of the comic? I don't know about you folks, but damn, they are giving off those Squid Game vibes. So yeah, as always, I'm your Majestic Sayer over at Supercliff, and if you guys are new to the channel, then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button, and also the notification bell so that you'll never miss out on an upload, and so that you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions on this issue? Are you guys excited for issue number 20? Let me know down in the comment section below, and until the next video, Peace. Giggity goo.